Hi, everybody, and welcome to our session, All Music for All. Um, I'm Amanda. I will be admitting this session. Before we get started, I have a few housekeeping notes for you. Uh, make sure that you download the Whova app. Uh, make sure that you also download our Publishers List PDF, which links directly to Smart Music. And make sure that you download your Certificate of Attendance. All of these links are posted in the chat. The Certificate of Attendance is also posted in the session description. Uh, please make sure to visit our on-demand sessions as well. You can visit those any time of day. Our live session recordings will be emailed to you within the week and will be available to you until the end of July. Um, if you do have questions that are not answered during the session, I encourage you to go to the community board and make sure to ask those there. And please make sure that you're following our community guidelines as well. Uh, this session is going to be hosted by Ms. Peggy Rakus. Uh, Peggy is a lifelong educator and has a ton of knowledge. Um, she started in the North Merrick Schools on Long Island and is currently an adjunct professor of music education at Hofstra University. She's the founder of Teaching Positivity, an organization that provides positive psychology workshops for educators across Long Island. She's also a certified optimized life coach specializing in positive, oh, excuse me, positive psychology. Uh, Ms. Rakes is a longtime fan of smart music and is passionate about sharing her love of smart music with others. Uh, during her career, she was honored with a nomination for the New York State Teacher of the Year and the Disney Teacher Award. She was awarded the Scope Teacher's Service Award and was twice selected as the Merrick Kiwanis Club Teacher of the Year. So without further ado, Peggy, you may take it away. Thank you so much, Amanda. And thanks to each one of you. I, I have a nice crowd here. I can't see your faces, but I'm really thrilled that you're here. And I'm hoping that you will participate in the chat that I would love to read at the end. I know Amanda is going to monitor it. And at the end, there'll be time for questions. And I'd love to hear some of your ways that you use all of the music in Smart Music for all of your students. Also, just to get started, um, I posted a topic in the chat of the Whova app. As we go along, if you know of gems that you know in smart music that you'd like to share with our community, I would love to learn that. And I'm sure everyone out here would love that too. So let's get started here. And so I'm just gonna do, just for those of you who are new to smart music, just like a little overview, super, super fast. Um, and share with you why I'm so crazy passionate. I've been passionate about smart music since the minute that I saw it. And I've been using it for many, many years. I don't, I don't ever want to teach without smart music personally. The practice tools that it has, it has a tuner, it has a metronome, it's got more content than you could ever, ever use. And today I'm gonna to show you some of that in, in ways that hopefully you can use them in, in sort of a new way and expand what you what you know the Smart Music Library as being. It, it provides feedback. It shows which pitches are right and wrong. You can make feed, you can make loops so you can concentrate kids' practice and it helps to guide their practice. It just does so much that um, no one else does. We can set a specific goals when we make assignments for our kids so that we can focus their practicing. We can provide expert instruction. And I wanna just do a little shout out to an article by Greg Goodhart in the Smart Music blog. And um, this one is called How to Apply Deliberate Practice in, well, Practice. It's, it's an awesome, awesome article. It was written in 2018. And I just saw that it was reposted on the Smart Music Facebook page. So you could find that pretty easily. So deliberate practice, expert practice, however you want to call it, consists of these, generally these three things. We do something, we play something, we reflect on it. Smart music reflects on it for the kids, even when we're not there. Then we make a plan for how to do it better. Smart music, we can click on the notes, we can see what we did wrong, we can see if there's a head or behind the beat. So much of this is what makes practicing powerful. If we can get our kids to practice with a deliberate practice technique. 
So that is really um, just a little super overview, just for those of you who haven't seen it, which I'm sure most of you have, you know, the green notes tell you if you're right and the red notes tell you if you're wrong, if you're behind or ahead of the beat will be yellow or orange. And um, if they can't hear you, it will be on the beat on the note, but you can't tell what it is. You can make rubrics so that it's not just assignment of red and green notes, but make rubrics of anything you want. Okay, but the real reason we're here today is to talk to you about all of the crazy amount of content that there is and how you can use it a little bit out of the box. There are 187 methods, including the Suzuki methods. There's eight groups of exercises, large ensemble content, 6,538. That's crazy. That's more than any other program. Sight reading collections. And then now with sight reading, the sight reading builder that they have here, you can make your own sight reading examples. Um, there's free selections if kids don't have anything. Um, jazz improv, we're going to talk a little bit about that and how we can teach jazz to everyone that we have. 1,411 solos um, for many, like all the different instruments, you can teach the same solo. Small ensembles, 123, but they can be used in many, many different ways. And then, of course, you can upload your own content. You can make you can on compose, you can create things, your kids can create things that they can share with the class and you can make those as assignments. It's really, really crazy, crazy good. Um, and now there's the digital sheet music catalog that just gives us like 13,000 plus new titles. Now we're gonna talk about a ways that we can use all of the method books that there are in smart music for all of our kids. Lots of times we might, you know, our sound innovations is our method book and we always use that, but there's all these other crazy good method books too that we can choose from. So I'm gonna give you just a little, an idea on how you can use that. So here I'm on my smart music screen and I've just Google, actually I've just searched out, Googled, excuse me. I've searched out method books and interactive. There's actually more that aren't interactive. And I can see there's all sorts of method books here that I could use with, you know, instead of just sticking to my one, I could go into all of these method books and find something. But I wanna show you a pretty cool activity that um, some teachers are doing that I think is really a nice way to get your kids and you to be creative about what's in there. So if you just go to the method books and then you type in hot cross buns and then you will find right here what are, there's eight different versions of hot cross buns. So as you assign a child a song in a method book, in the comments section, you could write as part of your homework for this assignment, I would like you to play at least three other versions of hot cross buns and then show them in class how they could do this, how they can search for the hot cross buns. And then they will have to go out and do a little scavenger hunt. It will get them used to working with smart music. It will get them being curious about what's in smart music, which is just a gold mine. If your kids are curious about what's there, you're gonna be all the better, all the better for it. I had one girl who um, she just found, kept finding band songs that she wanted us to play. And then once we did one of the band songs and she was so excited. Um, so here, what you would have to do in the practice analytics of your, um, of your smart music, you would have to look to see if the child opened up some different versions of smart music, of hot cross buns, but you could easily, and that would be part of their grade. Um, another little um, clue about method books. This doesn't really have to do with all music. It has to do with too much music for all. Um, kids can get overwhelmed by really, really long lists of assignments that they have to do, even if they're short little pieces. So lots of times just making one assignment and having that one assignment encompass looking at more than just that one assignment. For example, on um, it's number 18 in Essential Elements, book one, um, hot cross buns. So let's say I'm assigning hot cross buns. I'm going to write in my home in my assignment profile that um, to pass this, you need to look at numbers 10 through 17 and then submit me 18. So then you would go into your practice analytics and you would see if your child had gone in and opened up those assignments. You know, you could say open them each three times, practice them each three times. 
um, is a great way not to overload your kids with a crazy amount of stuff and also get them moving around in the lesson book a little bit. So that is just a nice little clue about using all of those lesson books. All right, we are gonna be talking about some of these other method books. We're gonna be talking about Pathways Towards Greatness, a really great um, resource for teaching jazz to everyone. Um, and Listen Sing Method, a way to train your ear for all musicians, habits of a successful musician, foundations for superior performance, all of these books we can use outside of their intent of their intention. All right, we are going to now go to Suzuki for all. So for those of you who don't know, Hilary Hahn, who is this world renowned, incredible violinist who I actually had the privilege of playing with when she was only 14 in the Mass Paper Philharmonic on Long Island. And it was one of the highlights of my life. By 14, she was already like crazy insane. So she has recorded um, the violin books one through three of the Suzuki method. And they are the most beautiful recordings that you have ever heard. And I took my daughter through Suzuki violin just so that I could find out what it's all about. And I was so impressed. And one of the things that they had us do was our kids always had to listen to the solo that they were working on three times every day. And they, we had a recording back then, we played it in the car, we played at dinner. I highly recommend that you use that as something that you could do with your kids, just have them just listen to recordings three times a day. That could be their smart music homework actually, is just listen, don't even play it, just put it on and play it three times. Well, now Hilary Hahn has recorded these and they are like insanely beautiful. So I need to play them for you. Um, they also, she also recorded the, I believe she's recorded the violin duets. They're played beautifully, I'm assuming that's also her. So give a listen to how gorgeous this is. Just the phrasing, the crescendos, the musicality. Oh my gosh, it's, it's honestly, it's really quite stunning that you can play that as an example, as a model for kids. So now say, let's say you aren't teaching Suzuki violin. Almost every kid on their instrument seems to learn long, long ago, play this for them, have them listen to it. Um, if you're singing long, long ago, play this for them and see how she connects those phrases and how she gets louder and how she gets softer. You can also use this as ear training. If you want to go a little outside of the box, you can play, click on the first note here and you can make um, make the sound so that, and then try to, have, try to get that sound and then have them try to make it up. It's got a nice little scale passage here and try to train them by ear. Um, I think, Personally, we need to do a lot more training by ear because if we don't, if we wait too long to do ear training, people don't, don't ever learn how to play by ear. So just, you can use this in small chunks and have a great, great moment listening to all of those. All right, we are then going to show you um, the Suzuki trumpet books were, were recorded by Caleb Hudson from the Canadian Brass crazy, crazy cool re um, recordings that you can play for all your kids, no matter what you're teaching them. So I want to play you a little bit of, of Caleb Hudson playing Twinkle Twinkle Little Star that I would encourage you to play for everyone. And, um, and clarinets could easily play out of this, this particular book. And just, I'm gonna play you a little bit from the Canadian Brass Flex Duets. So the flex, any flex title is good for strings and um, winds and percussion. And actually, I bet there's no percussion in those flex duets now that I'm thinking about that, but I'd have to double check. So just want you to listen to how beautiful this sound is and how you can use this outside of your class, outside of just trumpet instruction. And even if you're 
but you're not teaching trumpet, you could have that playing as the, as the students come in, just so that they hear that beautiful continuation of sound, that you know, beautiful breath support that just takes the phrases through. Um, all right, let's then also show you. This is this is this cool flex for two duet book. So you can play a duet with a member of the Canadian Brass, no matter what instrument you play. I think this is crazy priceless. So give a listen to this. I don't know, I'd be pretty excited to play that duet with uh, somebody who knows if that's Caleb Hudson or the other guy, but somebody playing the duet on the bottom, just insanely good. Um, the Canadian Brass, I believe that they're, all of their published works are on smart music. Many of them are flex ensembles too, so you can play them with anyone. I'm gonna demonstrate that a little bit later too, but lots of good Canadian Brass stuff there. Okay. So now we're gonna talk about small ensembles for everyone. And there's 123 small ensemble titles, but they can be played by many, many different groupings of instruments. So we talked about the Canadian brass, not all of it is flex, but a lot of it is certainly flexible. Um, the Power of Two duets, the second book here is a really powerful jazz duet book for all instruments and could easily be sung by um, vocalists also. Um, here we have an aria from, or not an aria, a section from La Traviata that is a small vocal ensemble that we're gonna show you. Adaptable quartets are for different groups of instruments. Um, any, any instrument combination, there's strings and there's um, winds. They don't actually match up, but you can do any group of strings, any group of winds, and then we have trios for any instrumentation that I'm going to show you here too, and more in the PDF library. So here I have written down that small, on, I've clicked in small ensembles in my search interactive. You can see we've got some holiday trios, 20 trios for any instrumentation. We have adaptable quartets for either the strings or the brass. Um, and many 123 more, which when you when you think about all the different combinations that there are, that's a lot of different ensembles that you can have here. I want you to listen to this recording of Amazing Grace. And it's going to be for all of the winds and the, um, and the strings, I'm sorry, winds and strings. And here we have some percussion too. So just give a listen to how beautiful this is. Oops, I forgot the first note, forgive me. What an incredible model for kids. And I think one of the real strengths of smart music is that it is a model. If I'm a flute player, I could never play a brass instrument like this and show my kids how it can sing. Um, also, because this is recorded by brass, I'm told by um, string teachers that this is, makes her a really nice recording for the string players to play along with because the brass sound cuts through and enables them to sort of match their pitch a little bit better and follow along. They can just hear it a little more. So I encourage you to look at these flexible ensembles by the Canadian Brass for your groups. Really just gorgeous, gorgeous stuff. Um, this is called Trios for Any Instrumentation. Um, so you would, this is actually for band and you can go through and just assign each one. But honestly, if you needed more materials and you liked it, they have a holiday book of trios. You could use this music, certainly turn the sound down and have um, strings play it, or you could have here, this could be a very high clarinet part there on the top, but, um, or you could have flutes play that. So just, you can use this a little outside of the box of just a normal assignment. All righty. 
then this is adaptable quartets um, also for all the different, here I just put, this is one is for four violins, but you, they'll have it for four cellos and the four violas and everything will match up. The same with the band instruments and the wind instruments, everything will match up. Another nice resource where you can just find really nice material for your kids that will go for everybody. And here is just um, this here we have from La Traviata. I'll give you a little, uh, a little listen here, but how fun would this be? Um, you could have a little flute player playing along. There's all the other, um, the other voices here. You could have somebody playing the tenor. You could have Flora, you could have Violetta. You could have somebody be the background sopranos. You could have a little fun. So this is just play you this for a second. So a nice fun way to maybe add a singer and add some instrumentalists together and make a, a really interesting out of the box ensemble. There's also 13,000, probably more now, um, PDFs that you can look at and just try to play with your kids, especially if you have C instruments here, you can play this song here. So tons and tons of materials. Then there's, um, this is a duet book called the Five Note Blues. I'm sorry, it's called The Power of Two. This selection is called the Five Note Blues. This is for all the instruments, a fabulous res a resource for jazz for everybody so that the strings could play together and everyone else could play together. And just give a listen to this really awesome stuff. So what I love about this is it has background tracks, it has all the, oh, this one is just queued up as, as alto sax, but it has all the instruments, strings and winds. And vocalists could sing through this. And I'm gonna show you a little something that I used to use with my kids a lot that comes from this book, which I highly recommend for all teachers of anything music is I'd recommend that you come up with a jazz articulation, a jazz solfege for all of the, the do's and the ba's and the dits and the dots. There's many out there, but this one, um, this one really called out to me. It's on smart music, which I was so thrilled about because I was using this um, before I think I realized it was on smart music. And I'm just gonna play you two, what I consider priceless things to get your kids to sing before they play a jazz piece. And if you are a singer, to get them to understand the jazz articulations and they could even scat these syllables. So let me show you what they sound like. So the premise of the book um, by Mike Steinell is, is you listen first and then you repeat and you go back and you play it. So here he's talking about the tenuto marking, which he's gonna call a do, ba is going to be the accent, dit is going to be the staccato marking, and then dot is going to be our little marcato. So give a listen to this priceless exercise. So much in there. But what I really love, like dit, dit is not dit, it's dit. There's like this jazz quality to a dit that's different than a, than a classical quality. And here it all tells you, it also, I didn't play you the ones before, but they talk about the difference between articulating with a T sound or with a D sound if you're a wind instrument. But now look at what he's done to teach you, um, to teach you swing eighth notes. Like teaching swing eighth notes, you can do it in like five seconds. If you have your kids, just simply listen to this. So he's going to play it normal and then he's going to play it with a little swing. Sorry, I actually have my card on. It's not quite. 
played it. Uh... So, so, so cool. Um, that, you know, how long it would take to articulate what just went on there and what you could teach just like that because the kids are seeing it and they're hearing it, the power of smart music. You can see it and hear it at the same time. Um, invaluable, my side just thinks so too. Speaking of invaluable, there is a wonderful method book now on smart music for all of the instruments, could also be used by singers, um, but it's for, it matches the strings and the band can play together. It starts off with a concert F, um, scale um, because F is a little better for if you're putting both of the instruments together. So um, this is by a man named Bob Sinecrope and it just has rave reviews and so much material. It starts out very, very easy, just in introducing kids to some easy blues jazz um, songs based on a, a blues scale. And then it gradually introduces them to quite some more sophisticated concepts. So you could take this book a really, really long way. So there's hyperlinks to instructional materials and videos on all of these things. It's structured. So it goes one step at a time. So it really is a powerful book. And I want to play you some of this here. So it's going to start with some just easy, easy um, jazz tunes. Um, that are really pedagogically sound for the beginner of uh, learning how to play jazz. So here we're going to use a minor pentatonic scale. Um, he has um, his, his pedagogy is you listen first, you sing it second, and then you play it. Speaking of singing, I learned this from watching Ted Scalzo's videos on smart music and he talks about how he had his jazz band hum or actually he's had everybody hum, I believe, and finger at the same time. And lots of times, especially if you're going into a band that's not used to singing, humming is a little less uh, frightening for them. And it also resonates in their body and the pitch resonates and they're using their fingerings at the same time. So really powerful activity for them to do. So you could sing or as Ted had his band hum. If I was still out there in the classroom, I'd be humming, humming my little heart away there. Um, so let me just give you a, just um, listen to how this one sounds here. You get the idea. I used to, um, when I taught, I taught elementary school jazz band and, and I would teach concert B flat blues in the beginning. Um, and I would use a, a B flat blues scale that I would just go up and down. And then my, I made up the, the blues scale blues. Do, 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 do. Do, 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 That's all it was. Actually, then it went. Do, ba, do, ba, do, ba, do, ba, do, ba, do, da. So you can use just anything like that to get the kids just getting started and hearing. And the and blue scales are so cool because you can't really play a wrong note. And uh, that is quite an advantage. So he starts off with some songs and then he goes into more of the theory here. He's just internalizing roots. He'll go on with all the other chord tones and, and embellishments to the melody. So give a listen to this one here. What a wonderful thing for all the instruments. So all of this is for everybody. Um, a really, really rich, rich resource. Okay, so now we're gonna take a look at cross training and using some, some of the things that were not meant for like listen sing method was not meant for instrumentalists, but instrumentalists could vocalize it and they can hum it and they will be the better for learning how to sing and finding do and um, Here's building beautiful voices, um, which we could just learn to cap 
help the kids get over their fear of singing if you are an instrumental teacher. And obviously, if you're a voice teacher, that book is gold. We in my elementary school, they would just put that on as the kids were coming into the room and just have everyone sing along while the teacher was taking attendance. Sound Innovations is a wonderful book that has um, solos written out for all the different instruments with a lot of good information and they're very hip solos. So I'm gonna play one of those for you. And then the sight reading exercises that were meant for um, instrumentalists, but they can totally be used by singers. So let's take a look at some of those. So this is um, by Cynthia Gonzalez and she created this book to help her college students with their sight singing. And I just, I actually taught for quite some time teaching kids solfege and uh, um, I loved it. And here, actually, I love here, she's, you know, if you sing a T, it helps you to establish do according to um, Edwin Gordon and his research back then. And here she does that. So you could have, they're going to play the melody first and then you just sing it back. When you hear, when you hear it back, this is not graded. This is just for the kids to try to do their best. That's it, no grades. Um, so here we go, or no automatic grades from Smart Music. And you sing that. And there they are, putting in a little T to establish that tonality. One, a wonderful thing for instrumentalists to do and sing through your, sing through hot cross buns, mi, re, do, just go ahead and use, use solfege to the better, the more you do it, the more your kids are going to play in tune and the more they're going to actually start to know whether or not they're wrong. They're going to be able to hear that they're wrong. All right, let's look at another method here. Um, if you wanted to, I, I think this would be awesome to put on in an instrumental class and just have them get their voices ready. So you get the idea, just get them to start to sing or give them the option to hum if they are so, if they're so shy. So now I want to talk about this sound innovation soloist series for all the different instruments that match up by band and then by um, orchestra. And you can teach an entire group a certain song. They can also use these songs for, for vocalists. Give a listen to the, how, how totally hip this song is. Um, and they come, I love this sound advice in the sound innovation soloist. So they give you some nice advice and let's give a listen to that. In the cool background. You could even, if you wanted to, you know, have some Vocalists make up words to that, you know, and then have uh, make up a song and create something out of that that becomes a vocal song. So just another great thing. And then here, we're going to talk to you a little bit about the flex titles. And for those of you, um, I'm sure that most of you are familiar with the flex titles as one of the saviors during the pandemic for people um, who didn't have balance in instrumentation. So I just want to play just one of them because they are truly gems. We're so lucky to have so many in smart music. There's 96 flex titles as of that page. I actually didn't check the title right now. It's probably more. So let's give a listen to one of those right here. And what a cool song this is. Just give you a little something to inspire you here. And you can use it with any combination. So you're not limited to just band, just orchestra. Now, I want to show you one thing that I did. And this might seem obvious, but 
any rhythm study in smart music can be used by absolutely anybody. And so I'm just putting it out there because this is one of my favorites and I just wanted to share it with you. I did use essential elements and then sound innovations when I was teaching. Um, this is the, the last couple pages, they have this and they have this also at the end of um, the essential elements book two. So I would put this on um, as the kids were coming into a band rehearsal and I would actually have them play it on do, me or so um, because my kids knew a concert B flat um, solfege and just had everybody play. Or if you're in a class, just have, you know, to give them the notes if you're in a homogeneous class. So I just want to play you that, uh, just this background and how cool this would be just as your kids are coming in, you can play this for them. Got the idea and and they like it it's okay you know you don't want to do it every single day they'll get they'll get a little bit tired but they do like it okay this is another melody that you can another book and this book is called standard of excellence festival solos and i just wanted to add this one to the other solos this one has a wonderful performance plan that anyone can access so um, just really good materials that you can use. I'll just show you this performance plan really fast. You click on it and then it gives you clap and play exercises also for all of the different instruments. All right, so now let's just get rid of these guys. And we're going to now talk about the solo titles and different solos that you can use with your kids. And I put on this slide, one of my favorite, my favorite books in smart music is this easy popular movie instrumental solos. Once again, all the winds would drop, line up, all the strings would line up. So you could have combinations of band members or wind or orchestra members playing this. You could also add some singers. Um, they have, actually, I just showed you the festival solos. That one was there for different solos. Um, top instrumental solos in contests and competition, little spotlight area, newly added pop solos. I get a lot from this. I'm gonna show you how to find that part right now. So we're gonna just, just want you to hear, this is from that easy pop solos um, book that can be used by so many people. I do wish Hilary Hahn had recorded those, but uh, everybody loves this song. Everybody, just give it to everybody you know. They will, they will love this. I just want to play you how crazy cool the recording is behind Hedwig's theme in that same book. <laughs> I heard a question I want to do a little shout out to Brian Balmage's um, session before and how inspiring that was. I encourage all of you guys to listen to it. Um, and he got a question at the end, you know, how do you make people passionate about practicing? This is one way. If they have read every single Harry Potter book, they are going to be passionate about learning this piece. And we want to use whatever we can to get them excited. It's really just about us making them excited about the music and pop music is just so easy. Look at this crazy cool, this is Dua Lipa's Levitating, like the best lesson on 16th note variations you could ever imagine. And listen to the really great background that they have here. You get the idea. Really, really hip. Whoever is arranging these things for smart music, I, I just I need to find out who that is and thank them because they're beautiful. And then I just want to show you one little thing over here. This is the um, carousel they call it, and just because sometimes I'm a little slow with tech, um, I didn't realize that if I missed the pop solo thing right there that I could go back and click on this button right back there and I would get to it. So just in case 
any of you were kind of as dumb as I was and not realizing that I could go back and see this, but they have positive vibes. I'm looking forward. I haven't actually looked through that, but I, I'm all into that. And uh, the DC comics and so Songs of Summer, how cool is all that? Now I am running out of time a little bit. So I am going to just show you this book is, this is from a book called Vocalize, the Canon Collection. Let me just make sure that I've got that title exactly right. Vocalize Canon Collection, there we go. So I'm just going to show you, um, this is a, a book of canons, amazing, amazing um, arrangements. It's for voice, but any instrument could do this. And some of these are really short canons that you could totally write out for your, your band or your orchestra and listen to how beautiful this is. gorgeous. And every one of them, if you look down here at all of these, they're all for voice, but how wonderful Dona Nobis Pachim is in here. Just some of the really kids, speaking of passionate, they love rounds. Oh my gosh, I don't really, I, they just do. They want to make every song into a round when they're little. So that is just a really um, rich, rich resource that everybody should, should know about. Now I'm going to talk a little bit about how you can use um, in the, as a general music teacher. If you're a general music teacher, put smart music up and use it for music reading skills, use it for folk tunes, use it for, to put on a beautiful tune that everyone could listen to at the end. Use it for rhythmic training, like I showed you in that one book. Music styles and genres, you can play all sorts of different ones there. Instrument instrument sounds so you can they can hear what the sounds like there's recorder methods in here that are crazy good there's a guitar method in here there's composition features where the kids can compose there's scores using the new pdf library a lot of choral scores um there's the sight reading builder that you can build sight reading and the kids can help you build the sight reading in front of the class and there is the the thing composed. So even if you're not using this as assignments, I would encourage every teacher out there to get a smart music subscription. It doesn't even need to be an educator one, just get a performer one, put it up and use it in your classroom all the time. Okay, so to review, we got the biggest library of all. We can use method books. We can use all sorts of different method books. Um, I encourage you to use Suzuki, play those magnificent recordings for them. Use small ensembles to build up your individual performance skills. Introduce your students to jazz from the beginning. Just do it, it's the best thing ever. Don't be afraid to cross train, make your instrumentalists sing from a young age. And if they don't wanna sing and they're older, make them home as Ted Scalzo would recommend. Have your instrumentalists sing and perform vocal materials and vice versa. Have the voice students read instrumental titles. Use those flex titles. Keep smart music up in your classroom all the time, even if you just use the tuner, if you have it up to go. And before we get to the Q&A, a super quick look. Right here, I wanted to just show you, if you want to organize your classroom a little bit, you can make folders in Chrome. And here I made a folder with everything that I just used today. And I opened it before so I could have it like that. So a little... Um, if anyone needs a little help in how to do that, you can email me, but it's priceless to put up stuff in front of your classroom before the kids walk in, because we know once they walk in, it's all over and you know you can't be letting getting stuff to load. All righty, so I am going to turn this over to Amanda and see if there are any questions. And actually, Amanda, before we take the questions, I'll, I'll just do a little shout out to my other session, which is available on demand, um, the power of positive teaching with smart music, as some of you could tell from my bio, I am passionate about positive psychology. 
And I would love to see some of you on that. And now Amanda, what's our what's our question? What what questions do we have here? <laughs> well, we are running a little bit short on time. Um, it looks like it's those heavy hitters. <laughs> Was there uh, anyone that you kind of gravitated towards? No, just pick one. Actually, I don't see them right now. So uh, awesome. um, how about the choir one? How would you choose music for a choir that's with mixed nationalities without offending anyone? All right. So. And I, Peggy, just so you know, we have about two minutes left. All right. Um, you know, I don't not offending anyone is a tall order. It is just a tall order. So I just think if you are inclusive in your music, and actually I'll put this out, there was another question there about world music. I would love to make a playlist, a collection of all of the world music that is out there in smart music and, and have that available, you know, that you could as an answer to that question, if we make a playlist of a lot of different choral materials or songs, um, actually that Vocalize the Canon collection has a lot of different cultures represented in it. That is a gold mine right there for different cultures. And, and you know, we can't, there's, there's a lot of countries out there. We can't represent everyone, but we can do our best and just really share the richness of our world's music. So if anyone wants to help me build a uh, world music playlist, please reach out to me My and reach out to me with any other questions you might have if something went by too fast and you missed where it came from, peggyrakis at gmail.com. All right, Amanda. So I think that's where I'll leave that one. Wonderful. Well, big thank you, Peggy, for being able to do this session and present your wealth of knowledge about smart music. Um, attendees, don't forget to download your certificate of attendance that is in the chat and in the session description. Uh, we have a few minutes before the next session starts. Uh, we'd really appreciate for you to take our survey. It should only take about two minutes and you can do it by clicking on the rate session button. Um, don't forget to check out the community board as well as this on-demand sessions. If you liked this one, check out Peggy's other one. And uh, we'll see you after lunch. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, everyone. So honored you were here. Thank you.